Okay. Okay, thank you. You caught me on camera there. That's because it's a live show. Uh, a whole lot of heat is uh, being generated backstage. That's understandable. Well, uh, we'll go straight to our discussion segment on the show, the road to 2019 Edo State governorship election. Our focus today is the APC intra-party squabbles. And a whole lot has been up in recent times. And uh, when you just expect that it will simmer down a little bit and something comes up and escalates the issue. Well, let's meet our panelists today in the studio. Let me thank very specially the Executive Director, Conversance for Democracy and Rule of Law, Reverend Lulu Martins. Many thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. We also have with us in the studio a member of the APC from Bubaha Local Government, Tosa Nusa. Many thanks for joining us. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for having me here. We have with us a member of the PDP, a legal practitioner, Barrister Felix Isser. Barrister Felix, many thanks for joining Same us. Here. We have uh, Comrade Stanley Nusa, Stanley Osaze, uh, is also a member of the APC and a public affairs commentator. Stanley, many thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning, viewers. Okay, um, Reverend Lumati, let me, let me start off with you to set the, uh, the tone for this discussion. I know somewhere along the line, that tone will either be <laughs> broken or the direction changes in, in the course of the discussion. But my concern is that it looks like all of these issues came to the limelight with the inauguration of the State House of Assembly. And the House has since been inaugurated. And... Uh, the House of Assembly is functioning with motions, with bills, and other functions of the House going on. We would just expect that the warring parties will come together, sheet their swords, and then move ahead. But it looks like that's not going to be anytime soon. What do you think is responsible for this dimension that this whole issue has taken? Um, <clears throat> thank you. Again, I must thank ITV for trailblazing such. Um, Tropical subject matters. I always like to open my speech with Patrick Henry that says that um, the collective freedoms of a people cannot be guaranteed as long as the actions and inactions of government is shrouded in secrecy. Uh, so when we bring these matters to the fore, it helps the public out there to be able to make informed decisions. Uh, so we must thank ITV for so uh, doing. Clearly speaking, I had said it way before now that the House of Assembly crisis is not a House of Assembly crisis for the sake of the House of Assembly. The House of Assembly crisis is a House of Assembly crisis for the sake of a succession process, um, in which case we're looking at 2020 when a do state will be expected um, to have um, a new government, uh, you, you require, I, didn't, I didn't say a new governor, I say a new you know, um, government for another um, four years. So some of us have said it before. And if you are a student of history, you will know that in this state and beyond, there's no governor who understands uh, the intricacies of politics, especially as it has to do with the web of um, um, exchange between the uh, House of Assembly and the state governor, especially that the House of Assembly is not financially independent. Uh, the House of Assembly financially till tomorrow is tied to the apron spring of the executive arm of government. So any governor wants to be able to take charge of the leadership of the House you know, of Assembly. And, and I like to separate you know, legality you know, from morality. As it stands today, because I listened to one of the actors um, who was saying that that's Washington your seafood. I heard him live on television. Where he agrees that the House of Assembly has been inaugurated, but his grasp is the fact that they were criminally excluded from the process. But he agrees that the House of Assembly has been uh, inaugurated. So, so you would think that with all of the things that is taking place, um, you know, um, uh, we saw the governor in the house of his, uh, um, you know. Uh, his uh, leader, I mean, politically, as the case may be, is being the national chairman of the party, of the party uh, during the uh, Muslim festivals. And you would have thought that these things would have died. But no, it is about 2020. And it is so. Because we must nip this thing in the bud. 
because the biggest business in Nigeria is politics. Go and check many people whose agitations and palpitations are high, young and old. You just find that a lot of people don't have viable, they don't have alternatives for survival other than politics. Moreover, politic, political money appears to be very easy. You, you, you almost practically do little, you know, or nothing, and then you can move from one state to the other. <laughs> if politics were not as attractive as it is in Nigeria, would not some of the agitations, you know, that are going on there, because nobody will care who the governor is. Okay. But look at, just look at Nigeria. Every billionaire, either the national or state level, and I'm looking at the Pacific State of the Federation, check many of them. 90% of them, their largesse came from patronage from government. That's why politics is so the, the, the policies is so deep. That's why the interest is so deep, because people are not looking at serving the interest of the common man. People are looking at serving self-interest, both for the leaders and you know their supporters. Because you would have thought that a governor like you know um um, um Basaki, who is doing the things that he's doing in the not just the thing that he's doing, in the way that he's doing it. I'm, I'm concerned about the tangible and the intangibles. Fixing the rules and doing things is not even that's the intangible. The intangibles is the the character of governance, the how you run governance, the decency you bring into governance, uh, the pattern with which you run, uh, you know, governor. Uh, you, you, you see a governor who runs governance with all of the decency that I know about, okay. and nobody can dispute that. You okay. have thought that ordinarily his political party, and I'm not a member of their party, of course, would say in the interest of the people. Uh, quickly, sir, I was, I, I, when I wanted to be student union president, I remember an interview I attended at that time by the Informers Academy. Was Akade Moses of the blessed memory was still alive. And then I talked, and several other people talked. I'm from Adedu by Manelu. So by the time they were going to take a decision, Was Akade Moses said a statement. Said, this guy is not a politician. He's a neophyte. The party won't serve our interest. But among everybody who has spoken, who do you think will serve the interest of the students the more? I don't let them agree. That even though they think that I'm a neophyte, I won't serve their interest. Yeah. But I will serve the greater interest of the student for which and I want. And that should be the consideration. I was to be elected. And Moses said, if that being the case, mm -hmm. Is only one year as a president. I would rather queue behind a president that will serve the people and not serve my interests. And that's how I became president. Okay. So you would think that that is what you know would happen. If somebody say, you know, it be preponderance of opinion in a those states. And if you do, um, um, if you if you sample opinion, if you wait, the preponderance of opinion, they are dissenting or the preponderance of opinion, not among the core politicians, but among the talakawa, the bobtails and rack tax of society. The preponderance of opinion is that this governor is serving okay. the interest. Let, and you have thought that the party will have said, okay, you know, even though let, we have let, 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 let him just continue. Let, let, me, let, me, post, the let me post it there, uh, Reverend Lomart, because I know you can go on this uh, part for the next one uh, non stop. But I gotta post it there. Um, let me come to Tosa. This is supposed to be an intra-party affair. But it looks like um, that harmony that is expected has eluded the party completely. And now we're even having at local government levels individuals emerging as uh, party leaders, as it were. What do you make of this? Where did the party get it wrong? Or are there centripetal forces that are influencing what is happening right now? Well, first, let me thank ITV for the good job that you are doing. And I also want to thank my brother here, who is not in our party, but can for himself see what is happening in this state. I think he's a good man. That is why he's talking the way he's talking. I thank him for this. But I want to tell you this, that even at the local government level, those declaring themselves as leaders know that it will not stand. It's very clear in Isaiah 7, 7, go and read it. It shall not stand, and that will come to pass. So for those of them <laughs> declaring themselves as leaders of... Because I can imagine a local government where you have figures who are political heavyweights, who has names to represent the people. Some certain celebrated thugs all over the place will come out and tell you they are leaders. He's uncalled for. I think it's punishable by the law and the heart of politics. While we're looking at the crisis, I want to also make it clear to the people of this country, to Nigerians, that Edo State is not really in crisis. The Edo State APC is not really in crisis. Some certain forces are trying to draw back the hand of the governor, not to develop the states. And they might say, no, 
I was elected to represent the people. I was elected to work for the people. And that is what I will stand for. And while doing this, some certain persons that has also governed the state before believe it is their right and those state money should be shared in their bedroom. And we have a governor who believes in the people and he said, no, and those state money should be used for the people. And what are we saying? Start sponsoring people to castigate the governor, to castigate the leadership of certain persons that we believe in politically. We are not really in crisis in those state. Those state APC is in that. We believe in the governor. Our loyalty to the governor is unstoppable, is unshakable. For those of them that believe in the crisis, to make one or two um, uh, profit or proceed out of it. Like Reverend said, if you don't have business, it's time for you to look for a job and start doing it because politics is no longer business as usual. You must learn to play by the rules of the game. What we are seeing or what, or what we are witnessing in Edo State today is as a result of greed. That's what certain people believe that they can rule Edo State from Abuja. And you have a governor who is well read, who is well traveled that believes in the people. So he's doing it and being complimented by his SSG. As so the person came out on air and said, no, Osadio Oge cannot be our leader. As far as they cannot be our leader, what are you doing? You want to distract these persons? And I urge them not to be distracted. Because if you think they will be distracted and you can remove any leadership through the back door, then you have some of us to start fighting. OK. All right. Let, let, I'll come to you, uh, Mr. Felix. Uh, uh, you, you've been listening uh, intently. and. Uh, trying to distill what has come forth. What are your thoughts? Because uh, 2020 is just around the corner. For a governor uh, who has been given a mandate to lead and is on the verge of seeking a second term election, a second term mandate, how realistic is this against the intra-party squabbles affecting the APC at the moment? I think, uh, Tony Duke, thank you very much for the opportunity. First, let me say that one thing I understand about truth is that it's very constant. No matter how you try to bend it, truth is always truth. That's why sometimes a leader, a spiritual leader says sometimes ago that, blessed is he that overcomes his ego and know the truth and also speak the truth. Having said that, you know, I, I, I disagree totally that right now we have a House of Assembly and they are performing their duty. In the eye of the law, in view of Section 91 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, there's no House of Assembly. You can't be having a house with just less than the 12 members and you are saying there's a house assembly. That is not what the law contemplated. You can't be talking about a speaker that was not elected by the majority. I keep saying this. I said, it is not only about the other faction coming to be inaugurated as the issue. That is not the issue at all. The issue is democracy and constitutionalism. And I keep saying it that anything that made those guys to subject themselves to the leadership of Frank Goye and get inaugurated, the Antonina Road Square should be turned into poetry because it means that that place does not fit to be called a legislative arm. It doesn't fit to be because you can't and twist people, uh, elect people you want to elect, you don't elect, uh, accept them to do not, you don't expect them to subject themselves to the leadership of that house. That is not democracy, that is not constitutional democracy that we practice in Nigeria. So the issue of House Assembly, as I'm concerned, there's no house, any point that is fighting themselves as speaker, as member of House of Rep, are just doing those on their own frolic, frolic, they are frolic on their own. We do not have House Assembly. Having said that, you know, I've also looked look at the argument of, oh, the governor deserves to be the one to, uh, to, desire, to, to have the speaker, to manage the house, you know, to have control of the house. You know, these are abuse to our constitutional ethos that talks about separation of power. The, the House of Assembly is not a tool, it's not an agent, it's not an extension of the executive arm of government. So the argument that the governor supposed ought to have control of the House is, is, is an aberration to our democracy. It's unfortunate <coughs> that those of us who project democracy should be talking in that light, not at all. A dozen House Assembly is not a property of the governor of a dozen state. Those people were elected by the people and they have the right to themselves become their speaker. Having said this, you know, people have also argued, oh, the governor has done very well, you know, the party ought to give you free uh, ticket to it. That is their own discretion. But let me say this. Nigeria today, we do not practice individual candidacy. We practice party candidacy. So if you as a candidate of the party who was elected on the party, you become a governor. After being a governor, you say, that, no, I want to become the governor. My party members are thieves. You know, they are greedy. They want me to share the money. I am ready to work for those people. Fine and correct. And two people should be your first interest. But you should also understand that when it gets to the primary election, the party will not decide whether, yes, you are loyal to us or not. You cannot blackmail your party leaders 
and tomorrow you come and say that the same party that should give you ticket, it's not done in party democracy. It's not done. The governor has done very well as purported by many of them. They have said so. What I was expecting him to do is right now that leave the party of criminals you have said. Leave the party of greedy leaders. Leave this party. Go to a party that nobody knows you and build a new structure based on your orientation. If Apple in Anabra, YPP, if I knew bar, he realized that no, I cannot contest on the IPC. I cannot contest on the PP. He went to YPP and he won election based on his popularity. So if the governor believes that he has worked very well, he should not disturb himself over fighting over APC, he should not disturb himself over going to PDP, he should look for a neutral party where he can come with his own reaction. You know, I also disagree that the governor has done very well. It should uh, work. That is not true. Uh, when you pass through GRO every day, you will realize that most of this work, the thing they have done, are make cosmetic worse. In fact, we have yeah, seen yeah, worse road in GRO today because our billions have been spent on the roads who have spent a standard road. But what do we see today? We see roads that were done by people who don't even know. Today, people talk about 200,000 uh, jobs. That is a mere facade. Anybody who is here right now to measure one person that has been appointed or uh, uh, that has been recruited into the civil service in those states, where is the 200,000 job? When he came, he talked about, oh, the Gelegele support. They should tell me what state are we right now yeah, in the Gelegele support. Yeah, they talked about the government is talking, doing education. Yeah, you are talking about education yeah, where the social institutions in the state have been closed. A child of law, who said, what are we talking about? Uh, it's on a joke. You know, they said the government is working, it's working. The governor is the chief security officer of the state. We have never had it worse on the issue of security. A governor that receives 500 million every month as security votes cannot empower the security to fight a kidnapping, cannot empower them to fight security, is an aberration to all of us. So I expect that right now, the government ought to be in a door state, you know, ensuring that the CMB of Iroha Social Utah has been kidnapped. He's released by all means. You know, the government is up to his toes. What is he doing? He's in the U.S. right now attending a summit that has to do with the interests of Edo people. So the governor has not stood for our interest. He has not fought for us. So in 2020, Edo people will decide whether he will be elected or not. And if we have to go by popularity, the governor cannot be elected. All right. Uh, this, is, this is a personal opinion, yes. which, of course, you have expressed. And, uh, and uh, of course, you also admitted that you're not in the party. The party so that's man. at the discretion of the party. Uh, but let me come to yeah, Tosa. Uh, I come to um, Stanley. Stanley Osaze. Yeah. Uh, what, what are your misgivings about the current state of affairs of the party in the build up to 2020? Very firstly, the truth of the matter is, when it comes to the issue of democratic principle, we must look at the process in which our leaders have been elected. What we have today in the House of Assembly, to me, there is no House of Assembly in existence. Believe you me. The, but when it comes to the issue of the party crisis, the whole of us, will, there, there are different reservations in different corners. But when it comes to the issue of the House of Assembly, believe you me, I don't believe that we have House of Assembly in existence. Because the idea of the governor being in charge of the House of Assembly should be wiped out from the system. A man who lived 300 years before Christ, as Aristotle once said when defining politics, he said politics is the science of collective happiness. Man by nature is a political animal. So in this case, it is very, very expected of the State of Assembly to carry the overall views and opinion of all members that are made up the House of Assembly. But what do we see today? He has just quoted from Section 91 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We stated that there's no less than 24 members and not exceeding 40 members. What do we have as a numbers in the House of Assembly today? You agree to the fact that it's not up to what is expedient. But in terms of the leadership structure of the political party, to me, there are some leaders that we know quite well have been able to carry people along, have been able to establish st structural development in the area of representing the people, like a classical example is the Bubaoka local government leader, Barista Osadiongi. That one is not in dispute. But the truth of the matter, let's, let's make the matter very, very explicit and clear. If we are fighting for the interest of the people, we must ensure that what we have in the state of assembly is reversed and the right thing should be done first. The Constitution Section 11, Subsection 4 of the Constitution states that the governor should issue a letter of proclamation. Let's say that has been done. And there is nowhere in the Constitution where you expect a new letter of proclamation to be issued. Okay. And there is nowhere in the Constitution where there, there is a restriction for an individual not to issue a second letter of proclamation. So that is, will be decided by a court of competent jurisdiction. Even if it, he, he issued a new one or he refused to issue, Let that should be issued that borders on the court. And as we speak today, that issue is already in court. I will agree to the fact that because of the, uh, because of the fact that some group of persons want to defend illegality, we are now seeing misuse of court process. It has been in existence. So, but the truth is this. 
all members that made up the House of Assembly should be well communicated to for a well-organized inauguration to take place. Now, what do we have today? There are some local governments that have been ostracized from the system. They have been systematically removed from the system because of the fact that some group of persons want to satisfy their interests at the detriment of the collective destiny of the people. The point is, please, you will talk, bro. The point here is very explicit and clear. What we want as a dope people is for the, for the interest of the people to be the driving force of what is supposed to transpire in the Senate Assembly, not the interest of an individual. Because what we see right now is no longer for the interest of the people, but rather for the political interest of 2020. I want to tell us, uh, state some point here. Are we trying to say that in our constitution, we have no, every individual has no right to fight for any position in the country? Who gave anybody the temerity whatsoever to say, I, it is my sole responsibility to have the ticket? If you think that you are very, very popular, allow the other assembly to be, then go and contest in the primary election. If you win and the people believe that you have the capacity to stand the test of time, they'll give you back the mandate for you to continue. So the idea of using strength and all capacity as an executive officer to take an advantage of democratic infrastructure to satisfy your interests, it's, to me, is considered as an aberration. So in a nutshell, if so facto, what is expected of us as a people is this. Let the House of Assembly be inaugurated properly. Let the people come out. Let the House of Assembly represent the true interest of the people. Those who think that they are popular, those who think that the people love them so much, go to the field and contest. Okay. If That's... you win the election, at the end of the day, yeah. we will willingly give you the support. Now, you cannot liken me to Comrade uh, Barrister Felix uh, Seri, because as a member of the People's Democratic Party, you will not expect me to destroy my party. The most popular person who has access to the ticket, we will work for him, be it Governor Governor Basaki, be it any other candidate. But the point here is this. Let the process be smooth. Let the interest of the people be protected. Get the, in, the, the, the ticket based on popularities and not based on intimidation. Okay. Thank you very much. If you just join us, it's still TMI Monday with your sincerely, Sonny Duke Okosun. We'll give you a number on the screen shortly, uh, just in case you want to comment and contribute to the discussion. You just send a message on our WhatsApp platform to uh, that number. We'll read them in the course of the program. Now, uh, Reverend Lomatis, 2020 is already here, whether we like it or not. And uh, you talked about the preponderance of opinion. Some say there is a big challenge in our politics in the sense that those who come from the private sector and sometimes from the academia, they always have a running battle with the traditional politicians. Why is this always so? <laughs> Thank you very much, because uh, even though in your question, you have already provided an answer. <laughs> you know why I'm not as um, emotional and you know, exacerbated by the things that are. First of all, I'm the only person on this panel who is not a member of a political party. Secondly, is that we, the supporters, we fight ourselves more than the dramatist personnel. These guys won and dine together. We will be, will be um, maligning ourselves in the street, getting high blood pressure for the guys who don't have issues with each other. I tell you, there's always a meeting point of politicians. And what's the meeting point of politicians? is what happens at the governor's forum. They never quarrel when they are sharing money. Have you ever heard there's a dispute about uh, how do we share? Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 don't, they don't quarrel. So there's a meeting point for them. And when the time comes for the political parties to choose who their candidates are, what are we find it's in them. Very just now, it is too early to say who will get the ticket oh, no. or who will not get uh, the ticket. Mm -hmm. Remember in the second time of uh, Lucky Benedio, there was such trouble between mm -hmm. himself and Titoni and mm -hmm. He didn't get the ticket for second time or not. He got, because politicians will always meet at their level. So I, I don't want to drink Panadol for somebody else. But some say this is a very peculiar situation. And we, uh, we cannot predict. We cannot predict. <laughs> <laughs> but politics is dynamic. Okay. Four years is a lot of time. There's a lot of time. Four years is short time for the typical um, politician. politician. You know, I never didn't have a lot of support for Adam Soshomolo. But it is difficult for me to say that in certain aspect, Adam Soshomolo didn't perform. It would be are we playing the ostrich to so do? Even though I didn't like him. But we could see some of the things that he did for the benefit of the people. So it would be unfair to come and say 
Because there are a few areas that are not being touched. Jonathan Kennedy said, if the government can give you everything, he can take everything from you. Absolutely. So there's no government who's going to be able to please everybody. I am saying that the preponderance of opinion. These are the things that are happening in Edo State. I'm not even just talking about it happening. I'm talking about the decency with which it's happening. And nobody has been able to tell us. Even if it's the courage to remove agorism from the road, mm -hmm. like it used to be before. Mm -hmm. If that is the only thing for me, I am satisfied with that because it means that people who have heads can now participate in governance. But let's talk about uh, 20, you know, 20. Um, 2020, the dynamism of 2020 is going to come to fore as the issues you know begin to um, do not forget that those state is a one-off you know election do not also forget that the political the opposition party in those state is not a weak opposition party if you look at what this governor what he won in the last election was a mere sixty thousand. all right and that's when the party was intact so you can imagine now where there are dissenting voices, voices within the party. They themselves are the ones that are posing danger for them. Is and the case in the question, way. sir, is he held your heart versus Okoracha? You see what happened to Okoracha? Okoracha moved his son in law to another party. When you move your son in law to another party, you are not going to take from the opposition party. You will take from members of your party and move it to another party. What happened? You have decimated your own party. And the house divided it against itself. Can never stand. Clearly can never you know, stand. So I expect that the All Progressive Congress will go into the 2020 with an undivided heart. As it stands just now, it doesn't look that they are ready for the crisis because it is a game of ego. And then this House of Assembly matters up. Uh, because it has been overflowed, and I think that we have over talked about it. At any rate, the matter is in court, so it will almost be soft judice to be discussed mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Lawyers have come here to say, and I was on this platform when certain lawyers came here to say, by the law, there is a house of assembly. Mm -hmm. Some other lawyers have said, by the law, there is no house of uh, assembly. assembly. So everybody are carrying their own case. So uh, we'll leave it, leave so it at the court level. But not forget that in this state, when we say, oh, uh, the House of Assembly should not be that is uh, that is an academic um, an academic discussion. Mm. In this state, we saw a Zakawanu Garuba versus a Bright Omohodion. My, in, my this state, my. in this very state, we saw the House of Assembly roof remove the practice until the House of Assembly financially independent. What we're talking is academic. The idea is different from what is being practiced. The idea is the fact that the House of Assembly should not be tied to the apron springs of government. But tell me any House of Assembly in the 36 states of the Federation is not tied, not tied to, to the apron springs. As long as there is no financial autonomy, he that, dict he that pays the piper must dictate the tune until we're able to amend the Constitution and make the House of Assembly independent. This interplace will continue to play out. However, for those of us in civil society, we are not concerned about the bourgeois. We are concerned about, we are concerned about the ragtags of society. That's why we don't carry card of any party. We are concerned about the market woman in Uniben. How is government serving his uh, interest? interest? We are concerned about the normal person on the street. So, let whether APC has crisis, I am not uh, aware. They have blind Matimayos, the guy who killed you, is he, we suspect that he's a bad man. He said, I don't know. All I know is that I was blind and I can see. Whether I show me the other Obaseki is a good man, I don't know the political party. All I know is that there were roads that were not fixed, now it is being fixed. All I know is that the education system is undergoing a revamping. All I know is that governance has become real governance and business. Let the parties deal with themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm not a member of their party. Okay. And I don't want to concern myself with, with some, yeah, with something that I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let, let, let me, I can't vote in the political. Let me, let me pass you right here now. Because the embellishment is becoming. Let me pass you right there. Uh, Tosan, um, is this crisis coming to an end anytime soon? Because most times when it starts, like we saw how it started, it just keeps expanding in scope and impact. Uh, if um, individuals are now getting people together to move and pass votes of no confidence on their leaders. Is it that a sign, an omen, or some of the things that are going to happen and probably shape 2020? 
Well, uh, like I said before, before I go into that, let me quickly tell my brother here, Barista Felix, that we know their games as PDP in this state, trying to fall the crisis in APC. <laughs> we know what they are all doing. But I will tell you this, free of charge. I will tell you this, free of charge. Whether you like it or not, we have a governor who is performing. Like you said, the Gagele Sipoja Manisha Kiriman, just take a drive with your speedboat around the water and see what the governor is doing there. Go to Gelegele and see what is going on there. Massive construction work is going on there, seriously. Less than four years, a man that we all thought is a weakling is doing what we are seeing today. God bless him for that. And I also correct one impression. <coughs> we were in this state when the same man that is fighting that the House of Assembly should be re-inaugurated. We were in this state when he used just six members to remove Zakarano Garuba. Everything did not fall. We were also in this state when he removed the roof of the House of Assembly and said he wants to renovate the place and shifted the House of Assembly to government house. Where they started making laws, passed budget for us. Everything did not fall. So we should continue on that path. Yes, excuse me. No, no. Because if you're making reference to that, it's like the president has been said, we should continue on that path. Tony, that must come to equity, must come with clearance. As the social media come to equity with clearance right now? No. The governor did not inaugurate the house with how many members? A full text messages and written document was sent to this before to come for inauguration. And yet they refused and they are in Abuja. Running from hotel to hotel. They should come back and represent their people. They should make themselves available for inauguration. But Nobody stop them. As we resolve, they came, they came, they came, they came for, they came, they submitted themselves for inauguration. And as I speak to you, Bauchi State is running very well with a PDP governor. There, let alone we have 20, 24 of these members. Why are they, why are they, why are they deceiving us? Why are they deceiving us? Enough of the crisis from Adasa Jumala, he doesn't want to destroy the party from the federal to state. He has created enough problem for this party. If he seeks my advice as a party, man, he should throw in the door and go home. Man, no, no, so let's, not take, let's not take it personal okay. because he's not here now. Me, I am so, coming. Yeah, yeah, let let's, let's, let's say things okay. that we can, yes, we can let let me tell you, here. Let me tell you this. Yes. We are APC members. I told you before, we are not in any crisis. Some persons, they have been sponsored. This is time for some of them to make money. That is what they are doing. They are massive work right now. Carrying security men all over the place, making noise. But I, have you forgotten that? In the local government, we are the evil concentrating on the Kobaka local government. We, we are the light of Honorable Matthew Joy Kebe. There are some celebrated talks with the leaders of our local government. When you have the council chairman that is performing, have you been to the Kobaka lately and see what the council chairman is doing there? The council chairman is just, is, quietly, the best. is just quietly doing his job. My brother, for the first time you will pass through, you will pass through Orebeni Market. You will not spend 20 minutes, 10 minutes on traffic. For the first time you go through a car market or market, you will not see traffic. These people are working. They should not be distracted, for God's sake. My brother, I went to Abuja. I spent two weeks. When I came back to Benin, there was this road I passed in GRA. Before I left, we could not use that road. When I came back, I saw the place well arranged and we have this man doing this job and some persons are somewhere crying foul all i expect from them right now is to support the governor to deliver my brother eight years with governor obaseki and don't will be a small london go and mark my words the, the, you see what he's doing go to logo houses and see the plants he's building the power plants go to logo i'm from logo as i speak to you the road from logo to a jockey that will take over how many kilometer uh, stretch? I am from Ekom, I go to that will take it. The government has already been there. They have come to take the coordinates. They are working. Kidnapping, you talked about security. Kidnapping was very rampant in our riverine community. We had we kidnap, they will go through, through one of the communities. As I speak, the man has set up machinery in place to stop them. We've set up local vigilante to start nipping them in the pot. What are we doing? Just came in from Lagos. What are we doing? Let him finish I, I, now. Let's, let's, let's take last, yeah. My brother, last week, I did one week in Lagos. I came through the road. Obaseki has put in machinery to check. So, so you're, saying, check. you're saying that he deserves a second term? He deserves term? a second term. Okay. My brother, not even five of them or hundred of them can stop it because he's at peace with the market okay. women. Let, let me I have come in, sir. Okay. He's at peace with the market women. Mm. He's at peace with the ordinary man on the street. If you want people to stone you in the bus, just discuss about Godwin Obaseki. My brother, you will not come down alive. Because the market women are clapping for him. The ordinary man, they are out there. Look at the educational system. For the first time, you see teachers going to school from Monday to Friday. 
Because they know that before you know it, the man will be in the company with Siana. You will not know the governor is there. Watch what is going on. And it's being supported by people like Osama. Right, so the crisis in yeah. APC, yes. I want to tell you, and it's, it's, it's going to be a disappointing story to him anyway, because he belongs to the party that has failed. Mm. We will resolve our crisis. Yes. Osuba, Osuba, Osuba and any crisis, they could not resolve because the likes of some greedy political were there. But don't forget that when Anani and Lucky Gnede were fighting, we were also watching. But, but they said many, many of those guys that they moved from the brother, from that party to your brother, party. At, yeah. the second, at the second coming of Lucky Gnede, mm. nobody thought Lucky Gnede was going to survive mm. it. Because heat was there. We were out there. The heat was there. Oh, Lucky is gone. Ashon Congress, Ashon Group, and uh, other group. But at the end of the day, there is a roundtable political discussion that went on that nobody ever said mm. that they would resolve. And as I speak to you, settling ourselves, APC at those states, we will resolve our issue. And I want to correct one impression before I go, before I drop for now. As the party leadership in the, in the states, they are at peace with, with Governor Obaseki. Apart from the national chairman who is gathering few persons to make noise. You we are in this state when we had a governor in the presence of Adaso Shomole, who, who, was, who, who was the governor there, now the national chairman. You cannot do what you are doing now. You, for what? The man will not take it from you. But you have a governor who believes in everybody and who believes that those that have BSC, those that have HND, those that ever have school south should get what they should get. Not those that have not tested the four corners of education being billionaires in this state. The man has said to put a stop to this. I said, look, I don't want this. I want decency in my state. For the first time you will go through the news and crown of this state, you will not be embarrassed. Nobody will come and take over your house and your property. You will buy land before they will sell it for five persons. The man has put a stop to all these things. Are these things not security threats? Okay. For a PDP man to come here and start talking like okay. this. All right, it so, 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 it's, not, it's not campaign yet. <laughs> it is it's, not, it's not campaign yet. It's not a PDP APC campaign. No, the way let, 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 me, let me get a neutral person. He has his right. He has his right. He's right. entitled to his opinion. You can't take that away from no, him. That's what Mr. Felix is saying. Mr. Felix. You said something a while ago that, yes, you're doing well based on the uh, rave reviews and the feedback from the people. But when the time comes, the party will decide whether you get it or not, will decide your future, so to say. But it looks like from what Tosan said and even what um, uh, uh, Comrade Stanley said, also said, the political parties they always have a way no, of uh, settling that issue. What, what? Why are you so convinced that this one will be a departure from that tradition? Okay, I think first before you know my brother <laughs> here, I looked at his very reaction and uh, approach towards the discussion. So I think most of us, I do not have any personal interest to protect in this all this matter. I'm speaking dispassionately based on what I believe in. I'm not talking as a member. You know, just a member of PDP, but as an do person understand what it means to govern on that, uh, those things, understand what leadership is all about. You know, we have overflowed the issue of the those other assembly, and yeah. I think there's no need for us to talk mm. about that. Why? Because... Yeah. If, but I, I, I didn't ask you any question yeah, about the House no, of Assembly. No, correct an impression. Yeah, yeah, so you go straight to so the point the that... The Speaker right yeah, now has yeah, yeah, withdrew. Yeah. No, no, no. Yes. I think we need to clarify that. Yes. He has withdrew the case from court. Yeah. He has realized that, no, this is an error. It was error for me to assume my party. He has withdrew the case. You know, from that angle, this issue of morality we talked about is very, very important. When the governor came in as the governor of those states, people like us, we fell in love with him. We saw a man who was very decent. We saw a man who understand what it means to govern a those states intel 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 intelligently. We saw a man who was very smart. But over the time, he has proven many of us wrong. <laughs> he has shown that the decency we talked about with the inauguration of those assembly, that no, 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 this man is not really a decent. He said, I don't want to play politics. I want to face administration. But right now, we have seen a man who is playing a very dirty politics. He said we should not go there now. Yeah, a very dirty it's politics. Nice you know, he came here. You know, one thing I don't like is yeah. when you are being given the opportunity to talk, mm -hmm. you know, in interacting with the public, you must understand you, you, you have the time yeah, to talk. Yeah. So when that person is talking, so you, you have the flow now. You have the flow. So 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 you have the the people who are giving the governor's problem is not even himself. Are people who are insulting the national chairman of their party? If I'm a member of a party and you come on air and insult the national chairman of the party I belong to, I will do everything possible to ensure you don't get the ticket of the party. So we keep talking about issue of Obaseki has done where Obaseki has done this, Obaseki has done this. This is election. It's not about Obaseki. It's about a dumb people. A dumb people will decide do we want him to come back or not. So we see, you ask me a question whether will he survive it or not. If you ask me.
from record from antecedent what has happened in a state or what is happening now have never happened in a dose state ah. where a governor listen where a governor will exclude members of his own party from inauguration it has not happened they make allusion to national chairman at our chomole that he led the house in preach. That is not the, the ratio of that case is different from the ratio of this case. He didn't do that to member of, of his party. He didn't inaugurate the house by night. He didn't do that. He didn't show the national charge of his party. He didn't insult the national charge of his party. He didn't insult members of his party. He didn't do that. The governor was very smart. At our chomole was very smart. That's why he was a very rugged fighter. That's why he believed that he has worked very well as a governor. There's something he did. He never insulted the president of the country. He played a very smart part. Because you understand that, even though I have worked, most times in election, the work really don't make you to win. What makes you to win are the politics you play. What are the politics? The politics are the ability for you to carry the politicians along. What makes you to win an election? I keep saying this. I believe in democracy. I believe in popular vote. I believe in the majority rule. But what makes people to win an election on election day? And not the numbers of roads you did. And not and not the infrastructure, what it ought to be. It's not and not. But are members of the party. The political party members are the ones who decide who's election. Because on election day, when they actually gone, when the ordinary man is running, the party man will stand and defend that vote. Okay. On election day, who decide who's election and not the voters who is clapping for you right now. They are the party men who will say, no, I cannot collect money to, to sell my vote. They are the party men. So in deciding who becomes the next governor of a state, mm -hmm. we must first look at the political class before looking at the people. Okay. All right, so, the governor right yeah, now, I have yeah. looked at the argument of the members of APC. Yes. Why they think that it should not come back? Ask me. They have a justifiable and a justifiable, a justifiable reason. When the governor came as a governor, when he was doing appointment, he said, Sin, my principle is if you don't win your unit, your ward, you cannot, you cannot get an appointment. Yes. I was a member of APC. I, I was qualified. In my ward, I was the most qualified person for SSA. What happened? They said, I did not win my unit. I cannot become. Yeah, no, okay. What did they do? They went to pick one guy who not only will have a school set to be an SSA. He won his work. No, no, no. The, the government right now, yeah. the member of the party, they have said that this was the rule you laid down. You did not win your unit. You didn't win your award in the last election. You are not so entitled to the election. Okay. The governor said when he came, he said, I don't want party members. I want negotiations. So in his appointment, he made use of the cost and foreign us. So the party did members are not saying that. Yes, he said that. No, no, no. He said that. He said that. Please, I'm just speaking. Okay, now can you ask the point, Bishop yes. Felix? Yeah, I've got the point. Please. I know. The party members have said that politics is only about empowerment. Mm. It's only about in, uh, inclusion, including your members of party to rule. But right now, what we've seen is that you are bringing consultants to come and take our position. Right now, we are no longer interested in projecting as our candidate. So the argument is very logical. Okay. Because a, a workman deserves his wages. <laughs> so you cannot say right now you are using consultant on a job job. You are using consultant on a lago daru. Okay. You are using consultant from Lagos. To okay. come and take so over what belongs to people of a okay. state. Okay. So if anybody should revolt against mm. such a person, mm. the person has every reasonable Barista right to do so. Right, let, me, let me get uh, yes. uh, Comrade uh, um, Stanley Osase. Now, now, now we, we saw the emergence <laughs> of Edo People's Movement. Uh, that actually became more or less like a rallying point in this whole crisis. And then just last week here, we saw uh, APC Bobaoha. Uh, liberation movement emerging and it looks like many more are going to come in the days to one. come yeah there's another one all right so i i, I, I want convenient. to get your thoughts along those lines uh, very firstly to be sincere with you people like me i would lie to you it's not as if i'm happy with the current administration in those state that is just my point okay now just, I'm just coming, a, no just a moment i'll come back to you for the benefit of our viewers uh our whatsapp number is on the screen you can send us a message uh with that number uh quickly let me quickly uh let me just take the few ones that we have i'll come to you uh come stanley uh there is no crisis in edo apc only few persons who do not wish the party well are trying to create crisis where there is none uh, except from Oshomara's speech at uh, except from Oshomara's speech at chief Adebi's birthday if two brothers are fighting and a snake drops from the ceiling do they continue to bicker or join forces and fight the common enemy me and my brother the governor have settled there is no rancor all those warmongers and propagandist rumor enablers this is from fa in benin uh, this one says mr sonny duke the issue of this house of assembly matter for me is already a court matter mm -hmm. but let me tell you in the eyes of the law we don't have the house of assembly because there is no proper inauguration 
I will not support illegally. <clears throat> this is Mr. Osaro Eboigbe. Uh, if Obaseki think he is really popular, he should leave APC and contest under a new party. Security in Edo is all time low. It has never been this bad in Edo State. The rules they are talking about has been washed away by erosion on daily basis. So no drainage. This is from Emmanuel from Benin. You can you can continue to send your messages to that WhatsApp number on the screen and let's uh, give them some attention on the programs now. Comrade, yeah. Yes. Yeah, the the, the, the proliferation of more pressure yes. group within the APC. Good. On the uh, road to 2020. But one thing I want everybody to understand here is very yes, clear. Yes. Nobody should attack Adam Oshomole. In fact, Adam Oshomole has stated categorically clear that this is our party. Do not destroy it. Every individual are fighting on the basis of the fact that they are members of the party and we have been relegated. I stated relegated back, by who? Yes, by, by the, the governor. governor. Okay. By the governor. <laughs> it is the, it is very clear. Let me tell you the simple truth. I, for one, I am not a member of EPM, but believe you me, there are some level at which I will agree to the views and aspirations of EPM. So that is why I said off camera before now that we have the same ideology. That's why we are working together. It's not as if I'm working with anybody. I am working as Comrade Stalin as a because during the election I was almost killed. At the end of the day, I'm not being caught thief or criminal. They have no capacity to, 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 to participate in the government that I worked for, in the government that I did all I could to ensure that it emerges. So the point is very clear and explicit. Now, I said, I'm still saying this again. The truth of the matter is simple. I have unreserved highest loyalty to the leadership of Barista Osaojoogie in the Bobo local government because he has been able to show true leadership, not because of sentiment, but because of the fact that a true leader should be able to listen, of which he has that capacity. A true leader should be able to take an advice from people. And as small as I am, as big as my Sardoge is, I can tell him something, he will say, oh, what you said is very true. Now, so, re re respond to the question that I, I am responding to. Which is me. about the proliferation of social group within the party on the road to 2020. Good. Yes. These things are arising as a result of the fact that we have somebody in government house that believes that he knows it all. That no other person can come out with his own view. Let me tell you this truth. When you have this functioning of communication even in, in your marriage. Mm. There's every tendency that you have this kind of conflict, not to talk of managing group of people. So the point here is very, very clear. The government the administration is not all about doing road water and this. You cannot expect me to tell you that my party did not perform. If we change the if we change the government today, we want our party to continue. How are we going to compare to the electorate when we have demystified our party on media to say the party has not performed? So when it comes to the issue of performance, I am not in dispute with that, but the truth is there is no way you can relegate really your political party and you expect us to be happy. Okay. I am speaking as Thomas Stanley has said, and my pain is that I have been relegated from the system and many other persons have been relegated. But the truth of the matter is, if a governor has the ability, to, a, a true ability to manage an administration, it involves the ability to carry your party along. All right. We have not seen board, be, board being uh, organized in this system. There are different systems in which party, excuse me now, in which the government should be able to incorporate party faithful. Are you saying we are not competent aficionado in administration? Okay, if let's say it is qualification that determines, are you saying that we are not qualified to hold one or two things in the government for us to disseminate our capacity? Okay, if so we are so not giving that opportunity, ask the question, you continue to feel the question a while ago. Ask the question a while ago. That, that is the point. All, all of this debate looks like it's centered around personal interest. Now, I, I work for the party. I want to answer that. I didn't benefit. No, excuse me. I work for the party. Sorry, excuse me. I I'm I'm a job. For it. I sacrifice I'm a whole lot. I, I, I don't get this. Is just yes, about I want to tell you something. You yes. play politics for two reasons. Even the government should know this. One, to better the life of the people around you. Okay. Secondly, to better yourself. If I should tell you now that Sonny, I want to take you to the United States of America, you look at my shoe, my shoe. I, will you believe me? So, anybody that tells you that politics, what is permanent in politics, is not interest, that person is deceiving you. Okay. The All biggest right. let's, business let's, let's, let's today in the case is a the next segment. segment. We'll take a short <laughs> break and then we'll be back to conclude our conversations on TMI. Road to 2019 at the uh, governorship election with the intra-party squabbles uh, in the ruling party. But the national chairman of the party, like someone alluded to, has come to say, look, um, I and my brother, we have settled. And so, if that is true, why all these underground currents, underground rumblings? We'll be back in a moment. Don't go away. TMI. Every opinion counts. 
Okay, thanks again for staying with us on the program. On the last lap, actually, our panelists will stay here as we conclude the discussion. Now, keep your messages coming in. or we'll take time to read them just before we call it a wrap on the program. Reverend Ole Martins, Nosa uh, Tosa, Pastor Felix is here, and of course, Comrade Stanley. Gentlemen, once again, thank you. Now, uh, look at it this way. Some party members have been crying that uh, they've not been carried along. They worked endlessly for the party, and things didn't go their way. All right? In the midst of that, you have some party members who, in one way or the other, they have been given a sense of belonging. A notable case in point is some of the recent appointments that we've seen, particularly at the national level. Taking, for example, the NDDC. Uh, these are some of the leverages that have come forth. Um, Reverend Olo Martins, you want to give us your thoughts you. on that? Against the background, is a very critical issue in this whole intra party yes, yes, squabble. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you. You know, you know uh, politics is about crisis and consensus. Mm. Uh, if there's no crisis, uh, there will be no consensus. We must differ. Uh, sometimes differ to differ forever. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, not every time that we differ and then we come back again. Sometimes we just differ, you know, and just, you know, go on like we say locally, share Gary, and just go, you know, your own way. That's what has given birth substantially to what is now known as the All Progressive Congress, especially in Edo State. Many of the members were people who at that time they could find expression in just one political party, but as the other one began to develop, they say, you know what, we can't, these people stop, you know, they align with our own, so let's go here and then find expression. And they have a right. To do that. Uh, so do you know I remember I also said at the beginning that a lot of times is also, you know, about the fact that uh, people are looking at what is the need for me. The basic business principle of YFAM, what is the need, you know, for me. And I agree with those who say that if the party, if they have worked for the party consensuously, I don't have that evidence, all right? Um, but if, if indeed their claims are genuine, uh, you don't muzzle the mouth of the ox that treads. They come. I think that the governor and his handlers should look out to the genuine demands of those who play, or even the Bible. Peter said, oh God, we have put aside everything mm -hmm. and we have followed you. Okay. Uh, nothing, nothing. So Jesus Christ said, don't worry. You will not only benefit in this world, mm -hmm. you will benefit in the world. Okay. So, but I got this poor saying that we have left everything. Maybe the government will say, you only benefit in the administration, you benefit when I, when I come back for second, second time. time. Uh, okay. you know, they, sincerely, that should okay. you know, be looked into and done. However, as I look at you know, board appointment, look, I can understand why the crisis appears you know, to still be simmering. It's like a volcano. It hasn't also erupted yet, but it's simmering, and we can see bubbles of molten magma suggesting the fact that this people has one bubble, one boss to make with the go. <laughs> it's because when appointments come, the appointments are supposed to serve the interest of all, all of us. Mm -hmm. In other words, we expect that the governor will have an input in who becomes, becomes a minister what? in his own state. Because okay. in the final analysis, they are supposed to be there's supposed to be synergy to produce energy for the benefit of the people. But if the governor makes an input, I am supposing, and then the input of the governor is completely jettisoned, and then it looks like the input of another somebody without the contribution of the governor produces the emergence of a minister of or a minister of state. You can understand why the supporters of either party will be saying that people say this crisis never you know come back. It was Abraham. Abraham said, look, Abraham and Lot were not quarreling. In fact, Abraham came and said. Let there not be crisis between your headsmen and my headsmen, not between you, you know, and I. So because if you and I said to our, our own supporters, yes, may not see that. So I think that the reason why it looks like is the fact that if you look at certain persons who have emerged, they seem to be certain persons who are aligned to one aspect of the crisis. crisis. So the other party genuinely would be, you know, Concerned. worried. So I expected that it's not just about talk, talk, then you must put action. To the top. So ultimately, this will come to so, an end soon. So I, I say, you know, as, as it is now, it looks like the everybody didn't come together to produce the name. You see why I like Ashiwaju uh, in Lagos? In spite of the fact that he looks like the Aka Ponde Tukikapi, he runs a confederate leadership. He has blocks. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a Lagos boy. He has blocks that he confers. He doesn't take the unilateral decision. That's why it looks like he's carrying everybody along. After you know, Lagos has never produced a male. Governor from I mean, a male deputy governor from inception. It has always been a female. But Femi Hamza came out because of Fashala, because 
Uh, uh, the, uh, this guy, the like, fashion is no longer his boy, as it were. So he said, you know what? In order for us to be able to fight Ambode very well, I must give Fashola an expression. That's how Hamza, you know, came together. Camps okay. and camps. There's okay. a carcass in the carcass. There's another carcass in the carcass. So I thought that the APC will sit down at the state level to say, this is who's going to be minister, minister of state, or chairman. If that has not happened, and the governor, the governor and his people feel that they didn't make impute in those who have emerged at the national level, you can understand why it looks like the crisis is not going to settle anytime soon. Right. But, sir, it is in their interest for them to settle. Oh, the so voters, the voters do not know whether you are APC or PDP. Okay. What the voters know at the end of the day, you can produce anybody, you can produce a file which you like, <laughs> is the fact that, is this person going to work for him? So because I'm worried when, you know, let me, let me push you now. That is the concern, yes. that is the concern. Yes. I'm worried when, um, Barista Felix says that is his what opinion. We, no, yeah, this is his opinion. Yes, yeah, yeah. Also, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. That what we work for you is not what we have done for the people. Because you presuppose the fact that you shouldn't serve the interest of the people. But I don't know it will not matter. All right. And, uh, and I need to uh, make sure. What are your final thoughts on this? Well, my final thoughts are our party crisis should not bother people. We will resolve ourselves. Why would it bother people? <laughs> I am coming. What, 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 what do you want to do? I am coming. No, the governor is not distracted. He's doing what he's doing. It's a people. Have you ever heard the governor make noise? No. He's doing what he's doing. The working structure of the state is still going on. The only problem I am concerned about is somebody cannot live in Abuja and make a do uncomfortable for us. We will not take it. We are young men that are growing by the day. So, whether anybody likes it or not, I am very particular about my local government right now. Nobody, nobody can tell us today that the leadership of Osaudio Ejoye Ekeme has not done well. Okay. Osaudio Ejoye remain the leader of the let's, 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 We are loyal to him. Let's, let's, we are ready let's, let's, to support him to succeed and survive. And we made it clear to some persons that whether you like it or not, mm. Queue behind these leaders okay. so that we will develop into people. Right. Right. And before I go, let me thank the local government for what he's doing. Let's get the final thoughts. Yeah. Nobody is interested in the crisis of APC. You are interested. Nobody, <laughs> because people, are, people are eating very well from the crisis. <laughs> before the government does not, does not share, but now not seeing government share anybody. He's not still so, so people are interested in the crisis. Why are they interested? <laughs> the EPM, as you have said, yes. the EPM, they are not really more for that bad government than the HR. What they are interested in, in upgrade the house properly. Do this thing. Carry members along. So their grievances are, are genuine. I also think that the governor on his own should, should be able to exercise leadership. Mm. In leadership, he must be able to make compromise. You cannot say this is how I want you to be. It must be like this. It must be one, these are your party men who work for you. You should be able to sit everybody down to say, okay, this is how we must do it. If your appointment does not go your way in national level, oh, as far as they are your party men and from a do people, you must protect it. Okay. The aspect of leading other uh, uh, persons from other states to protest against the appointment of NDDC board was so petty and uh, so, so bitter. So I don't think that the governor has been fair in regard to the national level. Appointment, because if you like it or not, the governor has been able to remove sack the people who are loyal to the national chairman from the state. So I also seen that national level, the presidency has also seen that, okay, this is the way we can comp compensate the national chairman so that he can be able to empower his uh, support so the governor will be carried along in the appointment of national uh, officers in presidency. It should not be an issue. I also believe that the governor has an appointment. For example, Charles Nelson Boha, who is the Nigeria Railway uh, Board, was an appointee of the governor national level. So the aspect that is the only one man that is a national appointment, from what I've seen, in so far. fact, uh, it's not a... Uh, All right, uh, Stanley, if you look at it critically, yeah. the governor cried out publicly to say, like, as a sitting governor, I have not been able to make a single appointment, including the commission, uh, the, the minister. Oh, and now, the same governor should understand the fact that those of us who are party faithful, we are not happy. <laughs> <laughs> not being part. <laughs> 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 you see my point. Yes. So, if the if this thing is paining you as a governor, yes. you should know it's paining us as a party man. <laughs> no, we, we, so we the, point let, the point here is very clear. Yes. <laughs> what you don't want other person to do to you, <laughs> do not do to the next to person. Do to what you want to do to you. Dude. Okay. So, as we speak right now, yes. If the governor wants everywhere to be okay, he is in the best position to do the needful. To do the needful. Uh, right. Take care. Uh, <laughs> so a few messages. Our uh, last one, last messages. Uh, this one says, "Sonny Duke, my brother. Thanks for uh, TMI program. Good morning. This morning from Benin. Thank you. It's TMI, not GMB. All right. And uh, what is playing out in Edo APC is a manifestation of a clear case of incapacity of the governor to manage people." 
and situations. Those shouting in the media in his defense are those who now have the opportunity to collect monies <laughs> in the name of a civil society group to agitate and protest for the governor. No altruistic motive on their part. Honorable Samson Osage is, uh, is what I brought her in. <laughs> and then uh, we have. We have. Just hold on. Let me read this message. Just hold on. Just hold on. No time. No, no, no. No time. No, no. This is not a bad thing. That is. That is. That is. That is a personal opinion. That is. You should maintain your respect. That is. That is personal opinion. You said that is your opinion. Okay, hold on. Can I. Can I. Can I. Can I. Can I conclude? He has every right. No, no, no. He has the right. He has the right to make comment on any issue. He must be able to advocate his right. He must be able to advocate his right. No, no, no. We should not be responding to him. We have never responded. We have never responded. No, hold on, hold on. No, 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 why must I say you will be different? You guys are off air now. You're off air. Why must I say you will be different? You're off air now. You're off air. So I get the power of it. You're off air. You're off air completely. No, you're off air now. Okay, now I take this message. Uh, good morning. It is, quite, it is quite disappointing that some politicians consider their parties supreme over the welfare of Edo masses. Those who are attacking Obaseki for contracting some jobs to Lagos are just after personal aggrandizement. What matters most is that there is progress in Edo State. How it happens is irrelevant. This is why Obaseki revealed that these party men are only interested in sharing money. The argument by some of the panelists on the show clearly proves this. Joe Osa, Isaac Mohi, thank you for your views. Mr. Sonny Duke, the fight or disagreement in the APC is a blessing, in, uh, is a blessing to Edo citizens. It will ginger the governor to work more for the masses mm. in order to get our votes. True. If they don't quarrel within, we the masses, what do we gain? Let them quarrel. <laughs> John from Benin, thanks. Yeah, that's right. And then, good morning, presenter. APC would ma right. wouldn't make such mistake to allow Governor Basaki to leave the party to another <laughs> because he is really working for the state. This from Bosaiti Radio. Thank you. Uh, good morning, sir. Just a moment. We know the governor is working. But he should try and contact qualified engineers to expect to inspect the roads because erosion have washed away some of the roads like leaders college road have been washed away uh, was washed away in two months you should look at the entrance of major junction in the Kawa road governor basically remains the best out of all the previous governors comrade mike odiete is talking gentlemen thank you for the messages that you brought to bear. And uh, let me say big thanks to all our panelists. Our time is up. Comrade Stanley, uh, thank you so much. Vice Felix, he said, thank you. Uh, Tosano, sir, thank you. Reverend Lou Martins, thank you for coming. You're talking about tea before. Yeah. <laughs> the, tea, the, tea, the tea is ready. The tea is ready. That's, our, that's it on this segment. That's it on this segment. That's it on this segment. Thank you so much. We appreciate everyone that made the show a huge success. All our panelists, we appreciate you. My name is Sonny Duke Okosun. Thank you for staying with us. Have a great week ahead. And welcome to the month of uplifting month of September. Bye for now.